Hello everyone, my name is David Murgada and I would like to thank you for this invitation and the opportunity to speak at your event and introduce you my work 25. In this short talk, unfortunately I don't have enough time uh, to talk about this. I hope I will be clear enough and not too confusing or not too rushing. Um, but I would like to answer this question, how does programming influence my work? And I will talk about this a bit more in the end of this talk. To myself, I'm an architect, educator, slash designer, slash slash intermedia artist. I'm German and I live and work in Daegu, South Korea. I do like to explore visual narratives through installations or generative procedural drawings and also animations made with code. Um, one part of this very important work of my work is The Dot is Black, which I founded in 2014 and it's online. Um, it's a platform for research design on generative and procedural drawings made with code and I'd like to investigate here um, design methodologies or generate design knowledge that I can utilize in other fields, spe specifically in architecture. As you can already see, there is a lot of images. It's about 900, I think, that are right now public and I think also about 100 and more videos that add also different layers to each drawing or maybe support them with um, a narrative. Uh, the dot is black, basically, in this work, in this platform, I do like to emphasize on geometry, natural science studies, and sound analysis. And this set I would like to also, because it relates to the work 25, I would like to talk a bit more about sound analysis. Here I would like to introduce you to Hate in Situ, uh, which is a project that I developed in 2018 at the Hate Festival in Chungju in Korea. Uh, I was invited to participate at the festival and also to um, coordinate a workshop. And I decided basically relating to my past work uh, using uh, visuals, audiovisuals, I thought it would be very interesting to actually try to visualize emotions or hate and anger emotions. And the work was quite successful actually. It also received some uh, awards, the Gold Award in Fine Art and Gold Award in Graphic Design at the Fresh Future 19 Awards in London, UK. And also has been uh, quite recently as well um, screened in Seoul at the Seoul New Media Art Festival, I think. As, uh, I don't exactly remember the name of it, but uh, kind of was quite successful and it still um, seems to be demanded to be exhibited. The inspiration for this work was not necessarily only my own visuals, but actually I was inspired by Eduard Leon Scott de Martinville, who recorded Au Claire de la Lune, perhaps the first recording ever. And he basically invented this phone autograph in 1857, where he could record his voice through with sound waves on a cylinder that was again uh, rolled out onto a a flat surface. Um, that was basically the inspiration for this project. So I was I got together with a few students in this workshop and we started to analyze how can we visualize hate. Uh, what means hate? We started to group things with each other. Uh, we started to identify uh, an particular situations of hate, not necessarily just words but actually emotions uh, and sounds and then we also try to test it with the code and also recording and again to the code and visualizing it so it was a back and forth process between both of them and eventually we came up like with 15 different types of um, hunger and hate emotions you can see here on the left uh, start on the top left uh, the scream, rage, angry, pain, groan, scratch, yell, I hate you, fuck, hate, grow, you hate me, anger, fury, and anger. So those are just 15, uh, 15 visuals, but they pretty much reflect uh, on the, my method and also how I work with code. Uh, here basically trying to produce information that in order then also control the visual. And if the visual is not good enough, basically going back and refining the data and then or creating the data that will control in turn the visual. I'd like to show you one example how that sounds actually and yeah! Yeah! Yeah. 
I'm sorry for the disturbing sound, but um, yeah, the most disturbing sounds create usually the most beautiful images. And as you can see here, this black image uh, has a lot of intensity. It has a lot of uh, depth to it, a lot of texture. It's almost uh, that the image actually is alive. It has the strength of the fury of this, um, this expression of this emotion. And this was actually the, this, the reason to investigate. I found this quite, um, uh, quite satisfying to develop those 15 different unique um, visuals. And in the process of doing it, there was of course um, new information appeared or new knowledge appeared. So for example, you can, when I compare now these two images on the left and right side, you can see one, it's both of them is about, is a word. It's not so much the emotion, but it was clearly visible that if the word is just plainly said, like you hate me, uh, it's simply the pattern, the texture is not recognizable. It's just only becomes like just messy. Everything is, seems like uh, merging with each other. Whereas on the right hand side, when the word, like in this case, fuck, was stretched to 24 seconds, intentionally, not just digitally, but actually intentionally stretching it, then the pattern starts to have some, or the, the visual starts to develop some patterns, some textures that are recognizable. Like for example, here in the beginning, you can see already the F and that's completely stretched all the way to the back. And then it becomes again an emotion. So every visual, every sound has a very particular expression and it can be also used to manipulate the visual. In this particular case, uh, it's zero to 12,000 Hertz also. So that's also useful to know. That brings me of course to 25. And you guess already what it, my work is about. It's simply an audio visual of the spoken word 25 that I stretched to 25 seconds and also translated into a vibrant, uh, into vibrant color waves. Um, in this, uh, this particular case, if it's necessary to stretch it to 25 seconds because the, um, the word itself, 25, is only just one second long. 25, 25. So you can hear here, it's too short actually to create a dense resolution, uh, enough uh, resolution in this image. So it's usually better actually to stretch it more. You can, it's possible to do it um, within the code to, ident to get more uh, steps uh, per frame. But um, I, did, I do prefer actually to stretch them and also listen to them uh, while the code is actually drawing it. That's actually more interesting because at, this, at the same time I am understanding how to control uh, with sound the outcome. And let's have a look how that looks like uh, when it's stretched to 25 seconds and also plots it. So I hope this was not too disturbing actually. It's a very strange sound, but I think you do realize, you do recognize that actually the more disturbing it is, the better the patterns look like. Um, as I said already before with hate in situ, the more violent the sound is, the more distorted it sounds, the better actually the visuals are. And I think um, this particular work, I do believe it has a lot of depth, it has a lot of intensity, it has some context in it, but it's also not too literal. It allows also for some uh, exploration within it. And as well, it has readability. It's possible to read the poster. It's recognizable, the word 25. I'd like to finalize my short talk with the question or with the answer to the question, how does programming influence my work? And I'd like to quote Paul Klee, who said in his exhibition, Creative Confessions in 1920, art does not reproduce the visible, rather it makes visible. So in other words, in my opinion, programming does not reproduce the visible, rather it makes visible. Programming is a medium, just like I wanted to show you with Hate in Situ, with my other works, that actually the programming coding part, especially with processing, which is very easy to access, very easy to work with, 
it helps us to visualize things that would be otherwise for us not possible to achieve or visualize. And therefore, at the same time, in return, it also affects how we see, how we perceive the world around us. So that said, um, I would like to thank you very much uh, for listening and I'm looking forward to the discussion after, afterwards. Thank you very much.